which is of God. God rules yes. over every facet of life. Yes. You can have a president of the United States, but he's not the supreme power. That's right. The supreme power is God Almighty. Yes. Amen. And when Elder Ricky went to the court today, I sat back there and I wanted to know how this judge is going to handle it. And finally, they began to talk in the police talk, and she said, well, where's the other officer who did the original made the original complaint, wrote the original ticket. He said, well, she's there, she's somewhere. But anyhow, uh, the judge said, well, in that case, you don't have a case. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. The judge said the same thing. All right. Amen. When I was there a few months ago, you can go now. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask for a human Hallelujah. And the judge realized, now they, they got something that they're working on. Amen. Even though he might have been legally out of step right. with the law, but the law is not the supreme law. There's only oh. one supreme law. Right. That's the law of God. Right. And as long as we can make up our mind, I've said this over again and over again, if we learn how to serve him and trust in him and then lean on him, well, who are we going against uh, a, a state judge? I guess a state law. Man. We are nobody. Right. But when we turn it over the hands of God and we can give all we know how, serve all we know how, God take over. He ain't got no case here. With the other officer. God uh, made it so that the other officer wouldn't be there so the judge could make a ruling and it would be legal. <laughs> Where's the other officer? Amen. Not here. Well, who are you? Uh, well, who wrote the ticket? She Amen. did, but she got something else to do. You can go now. Amen. Take this Amen. We got to understand that by coming to church on a regular basis, we establish a faith in God that rules out anything else because there's other things we could be doing. We could be at home watching TV, resting, worked all day, roused the devil all day. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to church again, and then right back again, Friday night, Amen. Sunday, and it's Sunday night, right back Monday. Ain't that too much church? No. Obviously it's not. All right. Because the early church had church seven days a week. Why? To reconnect 
the faith principle with the standards of obedience. Amen. When God gives a law or a rule to a church, that rule is given by a supreme being yes. who is God. Once that rule is given, that law is given, then it's up to the individual to follow that rule. Now the reason why there's so much, uh, give me, uh, I want to go to, uh, I'll read this first Thessalonians. First Corinthians, give uh, me chapter 15 and jump right in around verse 48. Understand that God has a reward for everyone who makes a sacrifice on the earthly plane to follow him. Now again, the earthly journey is a wilderness journey as it was called in the Old Testament. It's a wilderness journey right now. What is a wilderness? A wilderness might have anything. Step over here, you might run into a poison snake. Down yonder might be a bear loose somewhere. Amen. You, you never know what lies beyond the bend. But in the earthly journey, you can always be prepared if some kind of trouble won't come your way sooner or later. But when my trust is in God, then I don't worry about all these trials and tribulations. Amen. Oh, I have the trials and tribulations. How is faith going to be proven unless there's a test? All right, brother. How is loyalty going to be proven unless you go out and get something? So let us know that there is a higher or supreme being that can handle a situation I can't. Amen. Yes. Many times we try to uh, figure out things and work out problems ourselves, and we found out we cannot work problems out ourselves. Sometimes we can't, but a whole lot of times we can't. Yes. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, let's learn how to reverence God, yes. obey God, and hold his principles of faith till we, brothers, until it's just running over in us. Yes. Oh, the word of God says, well, I believe the word of God. Amen. Well, God said you can't do it. Well, I can't do that. God said do this and so. I'm going to do this and so. What well, God said so. Can't see him. Hallelujah. Can't reach out and tangibly touch him. But I know he's real. Because I read his book and I believe his book. Oh, that makes me know he's real. Oh, so once we understand that this journey is full of setbacks, tests, and trials, because it is a earthly journey. And the weak ain't gonna make it through here. Amen. But the weak has to be strong through the spirit. Amen. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong. When the flesh wants to do something against the oracles of God, the Spirit said, no, you can't do that. So therefore we have to hide ourselves, wrap ourselves up, tend ourselves up in the Spirit of God because we know that God is a true and living God and He has reward for us. Read a verse uh, 48. Well, 14, 15, 48. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And, really? as, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now, we are born in the flesh. But once we are transformed by the renewing of our mind, then we become a heavenly being. Not in the overall context, because we can't make that transition until we die and the judgment throne. Then we become a heavenly being. But we are spiritually a heavenly being right now because we have the Spirit of God within and God is a heavenly being. Are right, you read? Now this I say, brethren. Watch. The flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither flesh and blood, the natural you, can't go to heaven. Amen. Can't inherit eternal life. Read. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Uh -huh. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and at the last Now what does that mean, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye? He's showing you, the Apostle Paul, right in here. Amen. He's showing you how fast God's going to come and how quick that transition is going to be. A twinkle of an eye, you see him. And the fleshly you becomes transformed into a spiritual creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. Why? Because we've served God, and that's your ultimate reward. Read that again. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and at the last, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And the dead shall raise incorruptible, in other words, free from sin, free from sickness, free from any type of 
disease, whether physical or mental, free from death. There is no such thing as death once you've been transformed. Amen. Everything is eternal forever and ever. And we did the latter part of that again. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. In other words, this fleshly body got to make a transformation. It has to. Amen. But it can only do it spiritually. Now again, the rules to the church that govern the body of the church is to try to make a person understand that it's God's way and not our way. This is why when you watch those preachers over TV and you see them all the time, why aren't they speaking what we speak? Why aren't they living like we live? Why aren't they doing exactly what God says? Amen. Says? Look. It's because of and sisters, the rules that govern the church makes a separation within the individual. I've explained that to you before. A person is not going to obey God if that person does not believe in the Word of God. Right. But if you believe in the Word of God, then you're going to obey the Word of God. Head cover is a classic case. In the Church of God in Christ and other secular churches, they teach a woman's hair is given her for a covering. But it's, it, it, it's let me explain it this way. When you have a passage of scripture that you don't want to follow, there's always a counterfeit scripture you can go to to try to offset that scripture. Teach. So they went on and say, well, a woman's hair is given it for a covering, but did the Bible say that? But the Bible is using that as a parable. It's using it as a, some kind of a form of semblance, but it doesn't literally mean that. The same is in Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Does it actually say that? It actually says that. But it does it actually mean that? It does not mean that in its proper division. Yes. So what is the, the parable that is set up a woman's hair is given her for a covering does not it, it is used a natural example for a spiritual truth. A woman has got a natural covering. But it's not talking about a natural covenant. It's talking about an artificial covenant. We can prove this. Give me 1 Corinthians again, uh, chapter 11. Amen. Jump right in around verse 1. How does Paul set this teaching up? I'm using the head cover for an example. You've got all these massive churches going to church. King James Bible. Supposed to be found in the Bible. We're not put on the head cover. I watched Kreplo Dow about 10, 15 minutes of the night. Mm -hmm. And he had his wife on the, they had a, a little panel like a discussion and she got earrings on, makeup on, Amen. no head cover. I said, Now, how are these people teaching supposedly the truth of God's word in an agreement? Read, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver. Now, them what, to what, you. what does Paul mean when he said, Keep the ordinances? Now, keep in mind, there's no power but that which is of God. Amen. Now, Paul is an emissary of God. He's an apostle. He is teaching what God told him to teach the people. See, God don't come down himself and teach you that. You hear a whole lot of people say, I don't have to go to church. God, he, he, he talks to me. He tells me what. God don't talk to you and don't tell you nothing. Amen. Because he doesn't tell you to go to church. All right. Go. Amen. Amen. So, again, read that. Now I praise you, brother, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver. Remember to you. me. Remember the teaching I'm giving you and keep the teaching I'm giving you. Now that's that plain as bad as ice water. Read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Uh -huh. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. A man can't come to church with a hat on. Amen. Wait a minute. Are we talking about are we talking about hair? Can't be talking about hair. Because that's the case, everybody, a man, got to, he got to shave all his head off to come to church. All right. Do you see how plain common sense is as opposed to trickery and, and the cleverness of a false teacher? Read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonored her head, for that is even <coughs> all one as if she were shaken. Now, if you read further down the text, it says a woman's long hair is giving her for a covering. It is not talking in the same context as it is speaking concerning a woman wearing a veil covering because he said, keep the ordinances that I give you. 
the ordinance, he tells you, as a woman ought not to come to church with a with a head uncovered. And, I, and again, that uncovered means unveiled. Yeah. So you have to use common sense and through the Holy Ghost in order to make a correct uh, interpretation of what thus saith the Lord. Now I'm using the head covered as an example because it's a very good example because in secular Christianity, they don't do this. But even in the Catholic Church, if yep. you go back prior to World War, World War II in 1930s, 40s, a Catholic sister wouldn't go to church without yep. putting that veil on her head. Even they knew the veil was for real. And then even when she left the church, sometimes they would take it and drop it back on their shoulder. And all through Greek Orthodox churches, and all those churches back over in the Far East, the, uh, the Near East, rather, would, would, they would do this. They would follow that procedure because they knew there was something about a veil covering that was for real. And you see these Muslim women, they got it from the Christian church because Islam came 600 years after the death of the last apostle. So again, we understand clearly the Bible gives a set of rules in the structure. I'm trying to again bring you into this equation. Rules are given for a specific reason and that is to prove the code of obedience. And people can't see that. God tells you to do something because he wants to see if you're going to obey it. Amen. Well, yeah, but I don't have to do that. That was for them. Oh, that's for, uh, they don't do that now today. No, they don't do that. I was talking to a bishop in the PAW. And I said, well, I've noticed some of the churches now wear earrings and some don't. What, what, is, the, what is the problem? He said, oh, we used to teach against earrings, but we don't do that no more. But the church I came out of didn't. He was in the PAW. But this was in the PAW. He said, we don't teach that no more. He don't teach it. And a lot of churches don't teach it. A lot of churches don't teach the head cover. But does that make it right? No, it's still wrong. Amen. Well, God says so. Amen. We've got to come together and have a perfect understanding that it's God's way or no way. There is no power on earth or in heaven but that which is ordained of God. Amen. And if God explained it, expressed it, look at separation. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Lord. And then I will receive you and be a father unto you. What if you don't come out from amongst them and be separate? He's not going to receive you. He can't be a father to you. What? Again, obedience. Obedience is the key to eternal life with God. And I'm saying this for a reason. When Solomon was confronted by God to remove himself from them heathen women that he loves so much, mm -hmm. what you mean to tell me, Solomon, you love more than God? He must have. Hallelujah. And God loved him so much, he didn't send a message. He came himself mm -hmm. and warned Solomon twice. Don't this leave. He still wouldn't do it. Sometimes uh, custom can get into you so strong. I, I see this all the time, and I think I've commented on this uh, in times past, about having a clinic and special funds set up for drug addicts. Amen. It's, 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 it's one of the most comical things that you have to think about. You paying a whole lot of money for somebody not to use drugs. All right. Why do you think they use drugs? Anybody know? Because they want to. All right. Why do you think they don't stop? They don't want to. But it's ruining their health. <laughs> Obviously they must know it. Because look at their health. It ruins their lifestyle, their family situation. Amen. ruins their marriage. Ruins, ruins, get fired from their job because of drugs. You think they don't know it? Well, why do they still use drugs? Well, if you're that big a fool and you still want to use drugs, go ahead. Right. You're grown. Go ahead and use all you want to use. But don't look for no government from taking money from the taxpayers Amen. when they can use it to build a shelter for homeless people and then indoctrinate right. them into the truth of God's word. But they rather have methadone. What is methadone? A synthetic form of lightweight heroin. That's right. <laughs> if you use lightweight heroin, don't that still keep you in the... Uh, uh, the desire or the want for heroin. Amen. Oh yeah, but it, it quiets it down. And the more you, the more you use the synthetic thing, the more you gonna want the real thing. Amen. I saw an episode of TV they had, had these real life things in jail and that thing. And and a woman said, Yeah, I, I I'm here because of drugs. And drugs cause me to steal, write checks, and forge things, and 
And, 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 and she said, when I get out, there's no question about it, I'm going back to drugs. I said, well, this is, this is that. Of course, if I was a judge, she would never get out. Amen. Then she would let her out and let her go back to drugs. So she can come right on back to you. But there's something wrong when a person wants to help somebody who don't want to help themselves. Amen. Alcoholic? Well, why don't you stop drinking if you see what it's doing to your life? Well, I, I tried to stop and I could. Please. People smoke cigarettes. I, I'm trying to stop, but, but I just can't. Look like I can go two or three weeks. If you go two or three days, you can stop. Amen. Why don't they? Again, you come right back to kitchen now. Now I'm bringing this into, it, into a, a composite because I want you to understand why people do not obey the word of God. They don't obey the word of God because it does not agree with what they think it ought to be. So therefore, they don't want to do it. They don't do it. Yep. What? We're a head cover? Like true? Like them, them people in true life? Yes. Amen. No, no, I'm not going to go to that church. Fine. You don't have to. That's your choice. All right. That's what they say. And why did God set it up? To prove within the individual a for realness. God said in, uh, give me a, um, is that, do it around me, 30th chapter, right around verse 18. See, I've said before you. Amen. I have said before thee this day, life and good and death and evil. Now this day is the day you hear the teaching. Uh, read again. Yes. See, I have said before thee this day, life and good and death and evil. Death and evil, life and good. Uh -huh. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments. Not only to love the Lord thy God, but to walk in his ways. How do you walk in his ways? Through instruction. Amen. You don't know how to do it, but the Bible tells you how to do it. Is that plain? Read. And to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess now, it. Now, God said if you keep his commandments, he's going to bless you in this land or on this journey. God will bless us above measure if we can understand that there's a difference between right and wrong, and God has made that difference, and we have to follow that difference. Whether nobody else wants to or not, we have to. God has set true life apart for a specific reason. We are the guiding light for the rest of the world, and we've got to understand that. If you think I'm lying, you just watch some of these ministries that come on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just compare notes. Amen. Don't get in, involved in with these fast talking con artists now. That's right. Amen. Hilton, one of the greatest con artists that ever lived, retired down in Florida with all that money he stole from people. But one day he got to give an account. Amen. We all have to give an account. This is why back on First Thessalonians, I mean chapter, what is that, 15? Uh, I'll pick up right where you left off. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mort mort and this mortal shall have put on immortality, immortality, uh -huh. then shall be then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yes. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Death has no place in the kingdom of God. We are transformed. We don't literally, in a in a spirit sense, die. Amen. The flesh, you, dies. But we are not in the flesh. Is that what Paul said in the Amen. Roman letter? Yeah. We're in the spirit. Right. If so, that the spirit of God dwell in you now, if any man have not the spirit of God, he's none of his. That flesh, that person, is going to die. But we will never die because we are spiritual beings in a human body. The human body will die. But when the trouble of God sounds, we're going to be caught in the air. There be the Lord's body just forever. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a heavenly reward. But preachers don't talk too much about it because they didn't got to mention about hell. And they don't want to talk about it. They don't even talk about hell no more. Like it don't even exist. Well, it exists. Oh, yeah. Not only here, but it's an after hell. Because some of us are literally going through hell right now on, on the job. But it's not nothing compared to an eternal unrest, eternal torment and torture forever and ever. Brothers, it would be something if it said, well, uh, I send you to 20 million years. 
At least you got light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. I can't wait for my 20 million years ago. <laughs> but forever and ever, ain't no end to 20 years. Amen. 20 million years. It's forever and ever. Who but a fool would want to go that way? Amen. No, I make my choice. Yes. I'm going to serve God. Amen. But if you serve Him again, the Bible gives us a set of rules. And we have to follow it. Again, coming back to be separate. Yes. We have to be separate. Amen. Because God instructed us to. We gain love, uh, relatives, more than we love God. Now watch where I'm going. Amen. If I love God, and He should come out and be separate and touch not, then I can't have a ongoing type of relationship with them to the extent where it's going to corrupt my <coughs> thinking and my emotional stability with God. Now, watch. If I'm around a loved one who do not go to church right. on a 24-hour basis, every see them every day, talk to them every day, something's going to be said that is not, I would say, as a positive Yes. For your church. Amen. Teach. Watch and see. They're going to say something about your church. Amen. Mm -hmm. Do you still go there? Yeah, I still go there. Yeah. And they're going to get on the phone soon and get talking to you. And they're going to call another brother and don't go to church. Say, oh, it ain't going to be long. I, I, I can tell by, by talking. Yeah, but if you don't talk to them. All right, Why? I'm going to set the example. They don't set the example for me. Look. You want to come back to church, fine. Oh, I'll be so happy. But if you want to stay away, I'm not going to let that make yeah. me unhappy. Oh, amen. Because you made your choice, yep. I made my choice. Amen. Every living soul got to make a choice for themselves. Yeah. Now, if you believe the Bible, you come back. But if you don't believe the Bible, you're not, not going to come back. Amen. It's self-evident. Yep. And again, that's why obedience is so important and why certain rules are put into play because God wants to prove the individual, you don't love me. You, you talk it. Sometimes you even shout it, you don't love me. Because right. you did, what do you say? Keep my commandments and follow me. Paul said, I count everything as animal waste that I might win Christ. Amen. Everything. He gave up everything. He said, I would be more than any of the other apostles. Yeah. And I'm still following God. Amen. And I'm not a step behind him. In other words, he was saying, I'm just as important as Peter and the rest of them. Because I've been beaten more than all of them. been in jail more than all of them. Lord. When we understand that the apostles were on an earthly journey, but they kept their character. Yes. We have to keep our character. Brothers and sisters, because all we have is a character that must reflect the faith we have in Christ Jesus. If, if it's otherwise, it's going to show. Sooner or later, it's going to be revealed. Amen. But I'm saying, in the context of being separated, we have to set the example for our unsaved loved ones. That's right. And we got to continue to pray for them. Amen. I, this is not a, 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 a teaching to call you not to love your unsaved loved ones. It's not about that. Amen. It's about who's going to set the example. And if I got a testimony... I'm not going to let you cause me to lose my testimony. And then they're going to say, uh -huh, I told you so. Amen. I told you they weren't going to stay long. I told you. And the Lord forbid. And I don't care how I praise the Lord. Ain't no relative going to say that about Amen. me. Lord. When I joined the Holy Church, they probably said they ain't going to stay six months. Some of y'all, they said they wasn't going to stay six months. Amen. But look at you now. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Prophesy. She ain't going to be here long. But still here. That's right. Glory. Glory. And still carrying that cross. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you got to cry yourself to sleep. Yes. Sometimes it's lonely. Yes. But this is the earthly journey. Jesus said, I won't leave you. But here's the thing. I'm with you spiritually. Body up in heaven. On the throne. But spiritually. That's why he told the disciples. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Amen. Yes, I'm going back up. But you're going to leave us. Lord. The body is, the physical essence is going to leave you. The personality is going to leave you. But the spirit will always be with you, even in the end of time. 
And when you stir up the spirit, when you pray the spirit, the spirit lifts you up. Amen. Don't tell me everybody ain't been lifted up a time or two and you start to mind. You couldn't, you couldn't make it. Amen. The spirit lifted you up. Look at the time we had in the land. Amen. Look at the struggles we had going in the land. break down, this break down, bus break down. But we never got to be stirred. Yeah. You still hope. Hallelujah. And thank God, Jerry's going to be. Going back to make sure Jerry's son is getting mine. Amen. And go have a good time. Amen. Where's the car break down? We still going. That's right. Look. Hallelujah. Transportation stops us in Amen. that sense. We just get more, more transportation. Amen. The, the sacrifice, that's true, but we, we still go into the land. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because God told us to. Somebody's going to give the truth there. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Evangelist ever had a testimony. Uh, uh, Evangelist Coleman Jones called the other day. She said, how did it go? She was in the grocery line. Had a hundred dollars worth of groceries. Yeah. And a man come up here and she came ready to pay and he said, Oh, I'll take care of it. I'm gonna pay for it. Oh. Never seen a man in, in history. Yeah. <laughs> man paid for it. Yeah. She got so excited she left her cell phone. <laughs> and he said, wait a minute, I I I'll I'll call, we find out where your cell phone. He called and the phone rang right there where she left it in the grocery store. Amen. Oh. <laughs> now why why did God do that? He's trying to show her, even though you open the door, and nobody else but you and Jesus, and you lock the door and you go home. Well, Lord, maybe somebody want to be there. Maybe next week. Maybe not. But one thing God's trying to show you, I'm with you. That's right, brother. Amen. Lord. Now you think, well, I'm not with the grocery. Well, that ain't no big deal. It could be a big deal with her. Amen. I didn't say a dollar with the grocery. I said a hundred dollars with the grocery. And I don't care how you treat him, he's done $100, he's still $100. Amen. 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 So God shows from time to time little things to let you know, I'm with you. Amen. I know you, I know you get a little disturbed right now, but I'm with you. Thank you Trust, me. Oh, Trust me. Lord. Trust me. Trust me. Believe in me. In the Spirit. I'm not going to come down and magnify myself to you in that context. Believe in me through the Word. Amen. And believe that there's no power. But my power does oh, it. Yeah. He'll move a mountain, brother and sister. He'll change his situation on a dime. Yeah. If he decides to. Yeah. You can never, Lord. ever doubt God. Yeah. And you can never put yourself in a position to be compromised. Amen. By the word. Hold on to it. Take it with you. Even to your death. Take it with you. And I promise you when that trouble got signed, the Bible said we're going to rise with him. There to be with the Lord in the air. Not down here. Where's the air? I believe it's in heaven. Up in, up, in the, up in the air. Up in the cloud or something like that. To be with the Lord forever. So I'm saying we have an ultimate reward. But in order to get that blessing, we still got to struggle and primarily with self. But that's why I say wrong influence can cause self to make some horrendous mistakes. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if we trust God, believe his prophets, love him, and serve him, our ultimate reward is right around the corner. Because God's not going to tarry too much longer. You see, didn't they, uh, y'all see over the news about the little girl? Mm -hmm. How old was she, seven? Nine. Nine years old, a maniac out of nowhere, take that little innocent girl and kill her. And put her where? Duffel bag. In a duffel bag. Mm -hmm. For what? Duffel. Duffel. Mm. The devil. But I said before, and I want y'all to catch hold of this. When God gets angry with the world, he turns his back. Yes. Now those who are not covered by the blood, oh hallelujah. Anything can happen. I don't, even, I don't even like to think about it. Amen. Was she crying up for her mama mm. when that demon? Oh, just think. But brothers and sisters, this world is so wicked and evil. Yep. And the evil it gets, and the wicked it gets. God draws farther away from the world. That's why I say we're the only strength left that can keep this thing together until the time God calls his final. Solution and his final act. Amen. And then he's going to come. 
But until then, we got a job to do. Let's do our job. Amen. And let's do it with joy. For it's happiness. And not look at what could be or what uh, could have happened or how come this and how come that. That's not questioning God. Amen. Amen. We're not qualified to question Him. Amen. But He made us qualified to serve Him. Amen. Thank God for the Bible class tonight. Hide the word to in your heart. Let us have some closing words by uh, Elder Kenya. church I believe the last year or so I mean the service has been powerful the message has been so immense amen the spirit has been so hot amen it remind me of seven mile praise God because yes. I keep having dreams about that seven mile church amen amen you know and we're and we getting there you know when God weed out the church it's for a reason praise God amen and one thing that stuck with me you have to be separate you have to set the example, amen. We just not anybody. We chosen, amen. God knew us before we ever entered into our mother's womb. Yes. For this day, like he said to Ruth, you've been chosen for a time such as this, amen. So I thank God for being an elder, amen. I thank God for all the tests and trials that I've been through. And he always brought me out every single one. Why? One, because I believe in this word. And two, I believe in this great man right here. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Know that we are a peculiar people. Amen. Know that we are a royal priesthood. Amen. And if a person loves you so much, where they at? Amen. They be in church. You pray for them and say love. But don't let them influence you. Amen. You, we are the God in life. The Bible says we are the beacon of life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And y'all know my situation. Y'all know my story. But I learned to carry my cross. And God going to open up a door for everyone here. Amen. From the prophet to the back of the people. Amen. Amen. Person say they love you. If you love me, why'd you leave? Where you at? Are you invisible? Amen. Are you an invisible woman? Praise God. This ain't no Marvel Comics. Amen. This is real. Praise God. The, the, I don't want to hear it, amen. I've been, in, I've been in this race too long, amen. Praise God. I'm not no feminine, praise God. You can't come to me with that foolishness, amen. I thank God for being for real, amen. Praise God. I thank God for the men of God, amen. I thank God for my brothers and sisters, amen. I thank God for my little daughter, amen. Raising her up and holding this, praise God. I thank God for all the doors he's about to open, amen. I thank God for True Light Church, amen. I thank God for the spirit of God that dwells down inside, amen. One day, praise God, we got to go somewhere, amen. Hallelujah. Don't go to hell and you've been through this great ministry, amen. Praise God. Whatever you have to do, do it with a smile, amen. Don't do it begrudgingly, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're to build the kingdom up, not tear the kingdom down. That's what those rejects did. But now the rejects gone, amen. And yet, more will leave. But God going to have a church, amen. So make up your mind that we're going to build up that wall that Nehemiah talked about and prophesied about. I thank God. I thank God and praise God. I believe the word of God. Because he's going to work out the situations in my life and your life too. So pray for me as I pray for you. All right, everybody. Jesus. Lord, watch. 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 Lord, watch